So what is a digital twin? A digital twin starts with a real world entity of which we want to create a virtual representation for further processing and interacting with the real world entity. So that means we need to create a link. And here the big question is actually with which frequency do we get data from the real world entity and what is the resolution of the data. And we'll come back to this later. Now, the first part where AI can be used here is in what we call the reconstruction of the digital twin, meaning the creation of the virtual representation from the real world data. This can be straightforward, but as we'll see later, this can also be quite complex, in which case AI can be a suitable tool. Once we have the virtual representation, we need an API because a digital twin per se is not so much useful if we can't do anything without it. And we need the API to access the data or actually interact with the real world entity via additional functionalities. And this is where the second place can come in where AI can be used. Of course, it can also simply be code that is accessing the API, but in some examples, and we'll look at some examples later on, it can really make sense to apply AI to interact with the digital twin data through the API, for example, to gain additional knowledge or even control the real world entity. So next, let's have a look at digital twin in the enterprise context. So we have the physical world entities, for example, equipment in a factory, and then we create the digital twin. So this means we have digital twin entities representing the physical world entities, meaning they give us a level of abstraction and also help us standardizing the way how we deal with data from the physical world. We can even aggregate data. So think of individual machines aggregated to form a line, aggregated to form an entire site and so on. So that means we suddenly have a way to look at all of this data through a very semantically rich set of interfaces and of course all of this is enabled via IoT that gives us the connectivity to basically populate these digital twin instances with the data that we need. And as mentioned earlier on, key issues here are of course the update frequencies. So in theory, we want as much data as fresh and relevant as possible, but this usually also comes at a cost, so this needs to be balanced out. Next, we need to look at the digital twin in the context of enterprise data. Because, for example, we need data from an ERP system, from a manufacturing execution system, and so on. We might even need 3D construction data to really make sense of the data that we are getting from the physical world and putting it into context. So this is typically where enterprise application integration also comes into play to really help us bring this data from the physical world and the enterprise data together and then make this in the form of a digital twin as semantically rich data available to systems on the business operations side that need this data and will act on it.